Hey guys, it's Will from LearnRator, and in this edition of AP Micro Mondays, I want to walk you through comparative advantage and what it entails. So comparative advantage is a concept that is often tested on the AP Micro exam, and it's often confused by students with other concepts, where you know students really struggle with getting the core understanding behind what comparative advantage is. When you think about comparative advantage, I want you to think about who has the lower opportunity cost. So let's take this example in which we have two firms that can produce PCs and tablets. In fact, let's say that the first one is the US and let's say that the second one is Canada. So here are two nations that are capable of producing both PCs and tablets. And so what the question may ask is who has the comparative advantage in PCs or who has the comparative advantage in creating tablets. So the way to approach this is by first assessing the PPF or the, poss or the potential possibilities frontier. And so looking at this, we see that we have this capability for the US here and then we have Canada's PPF here. And what we need to look at is we need to essentially see what is the opportunity cost for the U.S. to create PCs and what's the opportunity cost for the U.S. to create tablets. And so the way to think about this is essentially by thinking about if I weren't to produce PCs, how many tablets could I make? And so when you think about this mathematically, that would be 400 tablets divided by 200 PCs, which is equal to 2. Right, And so what this tells us is that two tablets is equal to one PC for the US. And that makes sense because if we were to take this one PC and put it towards tablets, we could create two tablets, which is why in this case, if we were to fully create all only PCs, then we would create 200. However, if we were to allocate all of our efforts towards creating tablets, then we would be able to create 400. And so that's pretty clear in terms of just understanding how much the opportunity cost is for um, creating a PC. But now let's think about the case in which we create tablets. Well, in this case, if we create one tablet, it's just going to be the reciprocal of the opportunity cost for the PC. So in this case, we would be doing one half PC. And so the math behind that is, of course, in this situation, we have 200 PC over 400 tablets. So you essentially reverse the fraction here. And so what you see here is that the opportunity cost for producing one PC is two tablets, and the opportunity cost of producing one tablet is a half of a PC. So now let's look at the situation in which Canada uh, were to produce PCs. Well, in this case, if we were to produce a PC, we have 600 tablets over 100 PCs. And so therefore, we can create six tablets with the amount of effort that we would have used to create one PC. And so as we know, this would be one six PC equals one tablet. So now that we know this, what we can do essentially is we can re-enter these opportunity costs into the matrix. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now, if we go ahead and think about this, we essentially have an opportunity cost here of two tablets, an opportunity cost here of six tablets, and then we have the reciprocal of that, which is one half PC and one six PC. And so when going back to that definition of what is comparative advantage, we are looking for the person that has the lower opportunity cost. And therefore, we, we can see in the PC market, we either have one firm, the US, that can have an opportunity cost of two tablets, or we have another firm that has an opportunity cost of six tablets. So in this case, we see that this firm, the US, has the comparative advantage in creating PCs because they only give up two tablets for every PC they choose to make. And then in the tablet market, we see that the US gives up a half of a PC for every um, tablet they choose to make. However, Canada only gives up a sixth of a PC. And therefore, Canada has the comparative advantage for the tablet market because one six is less than one half. And so what you can see here is that we have two firms that have comparative advantages in different goods. 
And so if we were to summarize this, the important point is to note that in this situation, the US should make PCs and Canada should make tablets. And the reason why is because the US experiences a lower opportunity cost in comparison to Canada when creating PCs. And the Canada represents has a lower opportunity cost when they choose to make tablets over PCs. And so there is this opportunity for both countries to actually trade with one another to get an even better desired outcome because both of them have this comparative advantage, so they can essentially trade with one another to get a desired outcome that, that they originally may not have been able to achieve. But the main point to take away from all of this is that when you're faced with a question about opportunity costs or comparative advantage, you want to think about who has the lower opportunity cost. So the way to think about that is essentially by putting the units into a fraction and seeing what the opportunity cost is related to producing a particular good. So in this case, what we did is we took that original 400 tablets and put it over the 200 PCs, and that told us how many tablets we're giving up for one PC. And then we did the same thing for Canada, and then we reversed the fraction or the reciprocal to find the overall opportunity cost for the other good. And so that's how you should approach these comparative advantage questions. Essentially, you want to think about what is the opportunity cost and then compare the two firms with respect to the particular markets. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I will see you guys next time.